Morning, Joe. How are you? Oh, I'm all right. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm fine too. Thanks for asking. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> that sounded a little bit rude, didn't it? Um, yeah, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. I well, first of all, I didn't say thanks, did I? And then I say, and I didn't ask you how you were doing. Yeah, the, the, the protocol in the UK is to ask someone how they are as well, right? Absolutely, absolutely. I apologise sincerely. You're forgiven. I should be forgiven in this situation. So today we are talking about etiquette, mm. kind of British social etiquette, I suppose. Yes, totally. If somebody says, how are you? You've always got to say, I'm fine, thanks. How are you? <laughs> always ask them back. Um, even if even if you're not really fine. Yeah, it's almost like a greeting. Yes, that's totally right. And or, or we might say something like, so how are things? How's things? Mm. Um, meaning how's how's it? How's life? Basically, how's it going? So, yeah, um, I suppose another really important part of our social protocol here in the UK is um, that we we often apologize a lot. Maybe maybe we over apologize. We say sorry too much sometimes you usually say sorry for bumping into someone maybe unintentionally yeah it's it's something i think you learn after some time here you know you pick up yeah students of mine in the past um have commented on this and said why do you always say thank you for things mm -hmm. they're serving you that's kind of their job why do you have to keep saying thank you all the time <laughs> and i suppose well you know as as we said just now it, it would be just yeah wrong not to say thank you if you go into a, a british pub when i go into the gents usually there are two doors if you're going into the toilet or coming out of it when somebody else is when you're crossing paths with somebody uh, there's always this exchange of sorry thank you thank you Ooh, sorry yep yeah, cheers thank you yeah that's <laughs> That's a very good example. I suppose that also, yeah, when you're going into a building or into a room and, and you're the first one there, you always look back and kind of hold the door for the person behind you as well. But then when somebody doesn't acknowledge that you have done it, then I get, you can be a little bit like, that was rude. And I, I suppose that Brits are quite diplomatic as well. You know, in everyday life, they, they try to, yeah, not be so direct in telling you that perhaps they disagree with you or something like that, especially at work. Maybe they don't want to rock the boat. Yeah, um, yeah. I think also um, that is manifested in 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 some other ways, right? Uh, maybe I don't know, like queuing, for example. It's just a very natural thing to form an orderly line, you know. Um, one of my bugbears, like one of my pet hates, is when I'm standing, like you know, trying to get off the train, or it could be anything, like a train or a lift, like getting out of a lift. Okay, yeah. And then there's like a crowd of people waiting to get on, and they just start getting on before you've got off. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah, that is that is such a a common experience in some other countries, right? Yeah. Um I've had students sometimes come up to me in, with with an email from from their workplace if they're working in the UK and they'll kind of show me this email and say to me, "So, is this person saying yes to me or no?" <laughs> <laughs> Because um, the, the writer may have been so diplomatic um, that you have to read between the lines and kind of understand whether they've actually agreed with you or not. The level of formality tends to go up when it is slightly less direct. You know, we talk about passive voice and things like that, removing actors. He did it or she did it. It was done. Definitely. Um, I mean, Brits always try to save face by... Yeah, by being less direct, by also um, making things seem like it's their fault when perhaps it's not. And also something I think worth mentioning is that um, when we meet new people, when we meet new acquaintances, we don't normally kind of ask them too much personal information at first, do we? There's no, <laughs> there's no rush. So what things would you not include? Yeah, I wouldn't ask them directly, how old are you? It's like, how much do you earn? Or are you married? You know, stuff like that. The age, this is an interesting one. So my cousin and my sister's boyfriend were living with me. And so they must have been living together in the same house for about three months. And it was only until the birthday that my cousin found out how old 
my sister's boyfriend was probably just didn't come up because it's not a question that's asked i, I think that um you've got to be careful with women as well like especially asking them how old they are that wouldn't go down well i don't think yeah it's mm. something that's frowned upon i would say so we, we we've used a couple of like interesting words i think today that maybe we could um go back to so what we did talk about this idea of like reading between the lines. Now, where, where do you think, mm. what do you think that might mean? Um, so it would mean that you shouldn't kind of understand something at face value. So you shouldn't um, look at something and accept it as it is. You should try and kind of figure out the hidden meaning. Another another good phrase might be to rock the boat. Yeah, well, I suppose the I mean a lot of these are quite visual um, for me uh, when when we describe a lot of um, these kinds of expressions and rocking the boat. Well, if you're in a little boat um, with lots of people, then actually in in a way staying quite calm and still and not moving too much won't rock the boat and it won't put people um, in either in danger or actually just m most often, I suppose, feeling uncomfortable or a bit worried. Um, another good expression might be that something is um, frowned upon. It's kind of the opposite of a smile, I suppose. Um, yeah. <laughs> so if something is frowned upon, then it means that it's kind of not considered um, socially acceptable. So, yeah. Um, yeah, I suppose we talked about social norms. It's just this less of a thing, but an unwritten rule is just something that people know, right? I suppose. Yeah, things that they've kind of just learnt over the years, and yeah, nobody really talks about it, but everybody knows that it exists. I think yeah, we could uh, we could wrap it up there. I hope you guys have uh, un understood now a little bit more and feel a bit more confident about how maybe to read between the lines. Sometimes, uh, if you find yourself in front of a British uh, person, toodaloo. Toodaloo. <laughs> bye bye. Bye.